So today we're going to be trying something a little different. We're going to be doing some crime scene photogrammetry. So we have this dummy here, and what we're going to do is we're going to produce a 3D model, except we're going to do it in infrared. So in terms of the equipment that I'm using today, I have a Nikon D7500 camera. Now this particular camera has been converted, so it's actually a full spectrum camera. And this was done by Kalari Vision. And I'm very happy with the conversion that they've done. It's a great way to get uh, good value. So you get a camera which can still be, um, you know, can still use uh, regular photographs using some different filters, and you also get the benefit of different spectra. So you, we can get up into the infrared. Now I'm using two different filters here. One is 720 nanometers, the other one is 850 nanometers, and I have the 850 nanometer filter on here at the moment. And you're probably wondering what the heck these two little things are. Well, if you're working in the infrared range, you need an infrared light source. Now outside or uh, depending if you have like halogen lights and things like this, you can often have a lot of infrared light where you don't expect it. But um, in terms of some dark areas, or at least here in my office, I've got fluorescent lighting. It's not doing a great job. I want it a bit more. So I've got these and I also have some external halogen lights if I need it. And I put two on there. I just found that um, if you have a single one, it creates a hot spot. But this is the basic setup. This is really all you need to get going. And it's really amazing to see what things look like in different spectra. So let's have a look when we process these images. So when it comes to photogrammetry, it's really important to take a number of overlapping photographs. Now this particular shirt was actually shot at with a gun, and you can see there's a bullet hole here, and I'm not sure if you can see the other one, but it's just up here, and there's a little bit of gunshot residue. So we want to bring that out. We want to see if we can pick out some of that detail uh, a little bit better. But to start off with, let's just do a regular photogrammetry model. So we take a number of different photographs all the way around, and by doing so, we can create a 3D model. I'll show you the photographs in the infrared range here. So these photos you can see already look very, very different. And this is the 850 nanometer filter that's filtering out everything pretty much below 850 nanometers. But you can really see the contrast with the shirt. And so what you're noticing is that the shirt, even though it's dark to our eyes in the visible spectra, it's reflecting back. So it looks a lot brighter. But the lettering here is not. So it's absorbing some of the light, which is quite nice. But you see it has this sort of... Uh, color tinge to it or whatever that's very different and if I move to a different spectra so this is down where I have the 720 nanometer we're getting closer to the visible spectra on the high end so we see a little bit more reds but we're getting the contrast I should say and you know nonetheless it still looks pretty good so by taking a number of photographs this way we're going to be producing an infrared 3d model so here we are in 3DF Zephyr. So I've taken all these photographs down at the bottom here. And what I've done is allow them to process in 3DF Zephyr. And I'm not going to go through the method of how that's done. I'll save that for another video. But you can see I've got this uh, 3D model here. And in particular, again, I'm mostly interested in the shirt. And you can see here's one of the, uh, the gunshots that's gone through. It's got a little bit of uh, marking on the outside, discoloration. And we want to see if we can bring that out a bit better and maybe see things that we can't see just from uh, this particular model. So let's move to the uh, 850 nanometer uh, model and see what that looks like. So same story here. We have a whole bunch of images at the bottom and I've processed them in 3DF Zephyr. Uh, same type of thing, but you see we get some really, really nice contrast here. And I'd like to zoom back in in this particular area and you can see the gunshot and there's some things that we can't make out with the color one that we did just before with a regular camera. So this is really interesting because now these little details here start to give us clues about maybe the range that the gunshot was fired or some other information. So let's have a look at the 720 nanometer model. Here it is. You can see that we have some really good contrast as well. And let's zoom in and see what that uh, bullet hole looks like. So there it is. You can still see some of the markings on the outer edge of that there, which looks quite nice. And there's also another one, and that other one happens to be right here. So this one's not as detailed, but nonetheless, you can uh, see that you can get some pretty good contrast. So if this was, for example, a black shirt and it was able to reflect in the infrared range, these bullet holes would pop right out at you. So that's the basic premise. You can create 3D models, not just using a regular digital camera, but a modified camera using infrared. So don't forget, if you like the video, please hit like please subscribe. And if you're interested in crime scene photogrammetry training, by all means, uh, head over to our website, ai2-3d.com and look under the training section. Thank you.